Hello students, we are solving the IB Math A HL past papers and currently we are solving the IB Math A HL May 2022 paper 3 time zone 1 past paper. In our previous session, we had solved the question number 1 of this paper and today we will be solving the question number 2 of this same paper. And you will be getting the links to all the previously solved questions of this paper and of the other papers in form of playlists in my channel NS Online Math Tutoring Classes. So without any further delay, let us start answering question number 2. Maximum marks is 28 and it says, This question asks you to explore cubic polynomials of the form x minus r whole multiplied by x square minus 2ax plus a square plus b square for x belonging to the set of real numbers and corresponding cubic equations with one real root and two complex roots of the form z minus r whole multiplied by z square minus 2az plus a square plus b square equal to 0 where z belongs to the set of complex numbers. In subparts so a, b and c, let r be equal to 1, a b equal to 4 and b b equal to 1. A equal to r equal to 1, a equal to 4 and b equal to 1. Consider the equation z minus 1 whole multiplied by z square minus 8z plus 17 equal to 0. Because r is equal to 1, so z minus 1, we are having a equal to 4, so 2 times 4 is 8. And b is equal to 1, so 1 square is 1. Plus 4 square is 16. So 16 plus 1 is giving us this number 17. Okay. So we are having this equation and z is a complex number. Subpart e is, is having two further subparts and it is saying that given that 1, 1 is the real root. 1 is the real root that we are seeing from this equation. Given that 1 and 4 plus i are the roots of the equation, write down the third root. Because it is a cubic polynomial, it will be having three roots. 1 is a real root. 1 is the real root and there are two complex roots. One of the complex roots is 4 plus y, i. So what will be the other complex root? Obviously, 4 minus i. Okay, and I, I says verify that the mean of the two complex roots is 4. So, 4 plus i plus 4 minus i over 2. So, it is 8 over 2 which is equal to 4. Okay, verify it. Consider the function f of x equal to x minus 1 whole multiplied by x square minus 8x plus 17 for x belonging to the set of real numbers. Subpart b's question is show that the line y equals x minus 1 is the tangent to the curve y equals f of x at point a having coordinates 4 comma 3. Okay. So, we have to, this is the curves expression. So let us write that as y. So y is equal to x minus 1 times x square minus 8x plus 17. And we will be getting dy dx. dy dx, I'll be using the chain rule, sorry, the product rule. So when we differentiate this part, it is 1, so it is x square minus 8x plus 17. And when we are differentiating this part, it is plus x minus 1 and 2x minus 8. Okay. 
when we differentiate this part, it's minus 1. It is just 1 times this part plus we are differentiating this part. This is giving us 2x minus 8 and this is staying as it is. Okay. And the tangent is at point A having coordinates 4, 3, x equal to 4. So we will be finding the numerical value of dy dx at x equal to 4. Equal to 4 square minus 8 times 4 plus 17 plus 4 minus 1 times 2 times 4 minus 8. And 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 8 is 0. So this part doesn't, this term doesn't contribute, okay? So what is the value of, of this term? It is equal to 16 minus 32 plus 17, okay? So 16 plus 10 is 26 plus 7 is 33. You can use your calculator as well. So 32 min, uh, 33 minus 32 is equal to 1. So the gradient of the tangent at point 4, 3 will be equal to 1. And uh, therefore, the, therefore the tangents, this is the m part. So tangents equation. is phi minus 3 equal to m is 1 x minus 4. You can use the equation y equals mx plus c also. I am using y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. Okay. So this can be written as y equals p plus x minus 4 or y equals x minus 1. Okay. So, shown. And subpart C. Sketch the curve y equals f of x and the tangent to the curve at point A clearly showing where the tangent crosses the x-axis. And it is a paper 3, so we may use the calculator. We will be using the calculator to see the shape of the curve and we will be basically copying, okay? So add graphs and it is x minus 1. And x square minus 8x, probably x square minus 8x plus 17. x square minus 8x plus 17. Okay. Enter. This is the curve and uh, we have the tangent also. So that is y equals x minus 1. Enter. And if I uh, get the point of intersection, not intersection, now uh, the tangent, it is meeting the curve at that point. So analyze graph and okay, intersection, this is, this is. 4, 3. They had said that this is the tangent at 4, 3 and we are seeing that this tangent is indeed touching the curve at 4, 3 and it is rather crossing the graph curve graph at 1, 0. This is the 0 of the tangent and the 0 of the graph. Okay? Because 
you are having this x minus 1 factor. So this is the this is the shape of the curve. We have to draw the only thing that I need to draw is one thing more is the maximum. Which curve graph this one? Okay. Fine. So it goes to uh, two comma one eight means I can take two comma two and it is five comma one, so roughly that way. Okay, let me write two comma two and five comma one. The maximum is two comma uh, sorry two point two and five point one comma two point two and five point one two point two and five point one and uh, the minimum was four point three minimum. Again, I am saying four points, sorry, four comma three. And uh, the zero is one comma zero. Okay, the x intercept it is coming like this and it is going that way. Now I have drawn the x and y axis and I have plotted the points. This is four comma three. This is 2.2, 2 comma 5.1, and this is the 0, 1, comma 0. And now I have to draw the graph. And this is this way. Okay. And it is coming down like this. This is the Curve. This is the f of x curve. This is four comma three. This point, and this is two point two comma five point one. This is the one comma zero point. This is the graph of f of x. And this is the tangent. So this is the tangent at point, a tangent to the graph at point 4 comma 3, okay? And you are seeing the x-intercept is 1, obviously, because when y equal to 1, x will be equal to 1. When the y-intercept is equal to negative 1, when x equal to 0, y equal to negative 1. So this is the tangent, okay? y equals x minus 1. This is the equation of the tangent line. So we have completed to subpart C. Coming to subpart D, consider the function g of x equal to x minus r whole multiplied by x square minus 2ax plus a square plus b square for x belonging to the set of real numbers and r and a are also real numbers. A is Again, a real number b is greater than 0. The question for, for the subpart d, it is having two further subparts. The i is show that g dash of x, that is the first derivative of g of x, is equal to 2 times x minus r times x minus a plus x square minus 2ax plus a square plus b square. Okay, so. D i. We have to differentiate. So g dash x 
is equal to again i'll be using the product rule i'm differentiating this part first of all so x minus r when differentiated with respect to x it is giving us x square minus 2ax plus a square plus b square and when i am differentiating this part i am having plus x minus r and from this i am having 2x minus 2a and i can take this two part outside so it is and because they have written this part later let, let me write this term first it is 2 x minus r times x minus a plus x square minus 2 a x plus a square plus b square okay so shown okay and find i i is hence or otherwise prove that a tangent to the curve y equals g of x at the point a now a is having coordinates small a and the y coordinate is g of a what is g of a let us first of all find that g of a is equal to I'll be putting a in place of x. So it is a minus r and a square minus 2a times a is minus 2a square plus a square plus b square. Okay, so this is a square plus a square is 2a square minus 2x square is cancelled. So we are having. a minus r and b square times b square okay so this is g of v and the point is a comma g of v is, which is this and we have to find the tangent first of all tangents equation uh, so this is the gradient this is the gradient dy dx that is g dash of x at what point at x equal to a so we will be finding g dash of a over here g dash of a this is equal to 2 times a minus r and a minus a so this term becomes equal to 0 plus a square minus 2 a square because 2 a times a is 2 a square plus a square plus b square so this cancel so this is g dash a is simple it is simply b square okay fine we have got the um, radiant so that therefore the tangent is y minus y1 that is this one g of a that is this a minus r times b square is equal to m which is this b square and x minus a okay so i can just rearrange these so it becomes y equals 
A is A B square. I have taken this to that side or I have added A minus R times B square to both the sides. And I'm just expanding this. So it is A B square and minus R B square. And this side you are having plus x b square minus a b square. So these two will be getting cancelled and we have y equal to b square and x minus r. This is the equation of the tangent. So intersects the x axis. That means the y value will be equal to 0. And they have said over here, you see, b is greater than 0. b is not equal to 0. b is greater than 0. Because if x, uh, if y is equal to 0, then we have to find the x intercept. So that means the y equal to 0. So for x intercept y is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to b square and x minus r. So b is greater than 0. Therefore, b square is not equal to 0. Therefore, implies x minus r is equal to 0. Because B is greater than 0. Okay. So this gives us the x value as r. So the tangent, therefore, the tangent intersects the x axis. intersects the x-axis at the point R, capital R, having coordinates small r, comma, 0. Okay. This is the answer for the DII. The equation z minus r whole multiplied by z square minus 2az plus a square plus b square equal to 0 for z belonging to the set of complex numbers has roots r, r is the real root and a plus minus bi, these two are the complex roots where r and a are real numbers, b is also a real number and b is greater than 0. Subpart so e says deduce from part di where we had found that g dash a was equal to b square. That the complex roots of the equations, equation uh, this one, which are a plus minus b i, can be expressed as a plus minus i square root of g dash a. Now, oh, and it is containing just a single mark. And we had found that g dash a was equal to b square while getting the equation of the tangent. We had found that. Okay. So, we, uh, what will be the value of b? b will be, we have to take the square root of both the sides. So, it is plus minus square root of g dash a. And we have to neglect the negative sign since b is greater than 0. Okay. Therefore, b should be equal to the positive square root of g dash e. And just in place of b, we will be substituting this. Okay. So, the, the complex roots are a plus minus ib, which is equal to a plus minus 
i and square root of g dash e. Okay. So this is this is deduced in this way. Okay. On the Cartesian plane, the points C1 with coordinates A comma square root of G dash of A and C2 with coordinates A comma negative square root of G dash of A represent the real and the imaginary parts of the complex roots of this equation Z minus R whole multiplied by Z square minus 2AC plus A square plus B square equal to 0. The complex roots were of the form A plus minus I B. Okay. And uh, from here, you are seeing that also uh, in our previous subparts, we had so, uh, we had seen that G dash A was equal to B square. In fact, in our previous subpart, this is subpart F, in subpart E, we had proved that in place of a plus i b, we can write a plus i square root of g dash a and a uh, for this it is a plus minus. So it will be a plus minus i square root of g dash a. We have shown that. Okay. So uh, this was the thing and these two are, these two are shown in this, this diagram over here, c1 and c2. and uh, Okay, the following diagram shows a particular curve of the form y equals x minus r whole multiplied by x square minus 2ax plus a square plus 16. You see, what is the difference between these two? Sorry. See, this is z where z is a complex number and this is x, x is a real number. The expression is exactly the same. If you Try to get the uh, the roots of this equation. You will be getting just a single root. That is, you are having the single root over here. That is x minus two. Uh, sorry, minus two comma zero. So you are having x minus r. So you can say the r value is minus two in this case. Okay, and in case for x equal to x equal to a real number when x is a real number this is a real number equation then you will be getting just a single real root from this part and this part from this part you will not be getting any real root so there will be a single root of this graph and that is what you are seeing the graph is crossing the x axis at a single point and when in place of x in place of a real number you are replacing it with a complex variable. In that case, you are having one real root that is the same for this x minus r case. So, c minus r will also be having the minus 2 root, which is equal to r's value. And in addition to that, it will be having the two complex roots. Okay, so that is the difference. Otherwise, the equation is exactly the same. And the tangent to the curve at point A with coordinates small a comma 80. Okay, the curve and the tangent both intersect the x-axis at the point R, capital R, with coordinates minus 2 comma 0 and the points C1 and C2 are shown. Okay, so this is the curve that we were seeing and we are seeing that when x is the real number equation we are taking, this is the only root, the real root we are getting as negative 2. And when we are taking the complex number equation, we will be having this minus 2 as one of the, as the real root. And in addition to this real root, we will be having two complex roots. Okay. So, uh, now coming to the Subpart S question, it is having two further subparts, I and II. Use this diagram to determine the roots of the corresponding equation of the form Z minus R times Z square minus 2AZ plus A square plus 16 equal to 0. Now you see this is the uh, specific equation given like 
specific in the form previously it was given a square plus b square over here you see it is a square plus b square and now it is a square plus 16 this is the only difference that you are having okay so that means if you just relate these two a square plus b square in place of b square you are having 16 so we can write b square is equal to 16 we can write b square equal to 16 and therefore b is equal to square root of 16 I'm taking it as 4 because since b is greater than 0. Okay, so b is equal to 4. We need to find the uh, we need to find the uh, determine the root. So we have got the real root which is negative 2, and uh, I haven't written that yet, but uh, I am seeing the complex roots part. Okay, let let me write the real root part first of all. It is uh, since the graph is crossing the x axis at negative two, comma zero, therefore. The real root R is equal to negative 2. Okay. Now coming to the complex roots A plus IB and A minus IB. And we have found the B value as 4. To get the A value, and another thing that we had found was previously that G dash A, it is the Radiant of the tangent at this point A. Okay, if we take this expression as g of x, then this expression y equals x minus r times x square minus 2ax plus a square plus 16 equal to g of x, then the tangent at this point A with coordinates small a, comma a t will be having the gradient of g dash a, right? And we had seen that g dash a was equal to b square and b square is equal to 16. So, g dash a is equal to 16. The gradient of this tangent is equal to 16. Why do we need this? Because we need to find the value of a. So, because the roots will be a plus ib and a minus ib, the complex roots. So we have found the value of b, but we did not find the value of a. So, now that we know that uh, the gradient of the tangent is uh, 16, so we are having two points coordinates. These two points are lying on the tangent as well. Okay. This R point and this A point, they are on the tangent. So the gradient of the tangent is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is equal to 16. But uh, let us first of all write the y2 minus y1 thing. Um, okay, A is the first letter of the English alphabet. So we take this as the y2 and this as the y1. So it is 0 minus 80. 0 minus 80 over minus 2 minus a equal to 16 okay so i can just uh, write this as minus 80 equal to minus 32 and minus 16 a okay and uh, fine so 
I can in fact divide the entire equation by 16. Or, or okay, let me just take this to that side first of all. So minus 16a, minus 16a is equal to minus 80 plus 32. Again, uh, let us divide the entire equation by 16 because that will be making the numbers smaller. Okay, so this is, I'm dividing by minus 16. So it is a equal to 16 times 5 is uh, 80. So it is minus 5. Sorry, not minus 5. I'm dividing by minus 16. So it is plus 5. And this is minus 2, which is equal to 3. So a value is equal to 3. Okay. So uh, determine the roots. So the real roots, root is r equal to negative 2 complex roots. Therefore, complex roots. Uh, this is actually f i okay. and uh, complex roots are p plus minus 4 i because b was equal to 4 and a is equal to 3 so it is 3 plus minus 4 i and then they are saying that i i this is i i say the coordinates of c2 c2 you see it is below the x axis so the y value will be negative therefore the coordinates of c2 will be 3 and minus 4, okay? These two are the two complex roots and this is the real root. Okay. So this completes our subpart F. Consider the curve y equals x minus r whole multiplied by x square minus 2x a x plus a square plus b, a, b square for a not equal to r, b greater than 0 and the points capital A with coordinates a comma g of a and capital R with coordinates small r comma 0 are as defined in part, part d i i. The curve has a point of inflection at point p. The subpart G is having two further subparts. The I is saying it show that the x coordinate of the point P is one third to A plus R. You are not required to demonstrate a change in concavity. Means uh, you don't have to graph it or show the concavity change. Okay. Anyway, algebraically or graphically, whatever it is, you don't have to do that. But and what is g of a? Actually, this was g of x. This was g of x. The y it was equal to g of x. I'm, I hope you are being able to see. This y was equal to g of x. In the previous subparts, we have seen that. Okay, And uh, in order to find the point of inflection, we have to get the second derivative and equate it to 0. In fact, we had found the first derivative but let it let me find it quickly once more because i have not brought in the first derivative expression so dy dx is equal to uh, when i am differentiating x minus r i am getting x squared minus 2ax plus a square plus b square and when I am differentiating this part I am getting x minus r and 2x minus 2a 
okay and uh, the two can be taken outside but anyway so this is the first derivative let me just get the second derivative as well so d2y dx square okay and so let me just differentiate this part so it is x 2x rather 2x minus 2a and for this i require the product rule again when this part is differentiated i am getting plus 2x minus a And when I am differentiating this part, so I am getting 2x minus r. Okay. Because this is a constant term, this will go and uh, the derivative of this will be equal to 0 and the derivative of 2x is 2. Okay, so I am getting this thing and so this is in fact equal to. 2x minus, uh, sorry, 2x and this is 2x, so this is 4x rather. 4x and this is minus 2a and that is also minus 2a, so plus uh, minus 4a. Oh, over here also we are having another 2x, so 2x minus 2r. So it is 6x minus 2r minus 4a okay. and uh, okay so this should be equal to 0 because it is the point of inflection so this should be equal to 0 fine and uh, we have to get the value of e, uh, sorry x so we can write 6x is equal to to 4a plus 2r and I can divide the entire equation by 2 to get 3x equal to 2a plus r or x equal to one third times 2a plus r okay so this will be the x coordinate or the point p x coordinate of p okay fine we have solved the subpart i coming to subpart i i hence Hence, describe numerically the horizontal position of point P relative to the horizontal positions of points R and A. Horizontal position means the X thing. So, this is, uh, okay, let me draw a line. This is the point R with This is the number line actually. This is with coordinate r, x coordinate as small r, and this is the point E. This is the point E with the x coordinate as point as small e. I don't know where will uh, the point P lie over here. I'm just drawing arbitrarily. I'm putting a point over here. It is uh, from my diagram. It is appearing to be closer to a point R than to point P, but it can be the opposite way. I have no idea. So, uh, so let us just find the. This is uh, one third to A plus R. Now let us find the uh, distance.
E B taken, so uh, X is taken. I cannot take X Y. So let me take this as C and this T. Uh, Don't have any C D, right? Not having any C D. Oh. Okay. So uh, C is equal to one third or two third. A, two third A plus one third R minus R is equal to two third A minus two third R, which is equal to two third A minus R. Okay. And uh, I am getting the expression for D. It is A minus one third or uh, uh, two third A and minus one third R equal to one third A minus one third R equal to one third A minus R. Okay. So let me draw the thing properly. I am seeing C is therefore C is more than D. So my diagram is not correct. Let me draw it correctly. Just this is this is the x axis. This is maybe this is so uh, r with x coordinate as small r. This is a capital A with x coordinate as rather and. Uh, Okay, so if I just trisect this, so this point will be the P point, or rather this is P. It is one third two A plus R. Okay, and. Um, this is the this is the horizontal position of P relative to the horizontal positions of R and A. So let me write the horizontal distance A minus R. Why did I do this? Because the whole thing, the whole distance between the, the A and R is equal to A minus R. Okay, that is why I have trisected. Because this is two-third of A minus R and this is one-third of A minus R. Okay, that is why I have trisected the total distance. So the horizontal distance Between R or points R and P is twice the horizontal distance between the points A and P. Okay, so this is the answer for the I-I. Consider the special case where 
a is equal to r and b is greater than 0. The subpart h, it is also having two further subparts. The i is saying sketch the curve y equals this was g of x is equal to x minus r whole multiplied by x square minus 2ax plus a square plus b square for a equal to r equal to 1 and b equal to 2. So the, let me take this is h and i. r is equal to 1, so the y is equal to x minus 1 and that is x square a is equal to 1. So 2 a 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2 x plus 1 and b is equal to 2. So 2 square is 4, 1 square is 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. So we have to first of all sketch this graph x minus 1 whole multiplied by x square minus 2 x plus 5. So let us go to graphs again and x minus 1. Sorry. Over here. x minus 1 and x square minus 2x plus 5 x square minus 2x plus 5. Enter. So this is the graph and I am seeing the the x intercept is 1, comma, 0 and the y intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Y intercept is 5 has to be because this is the constant term. Negative 5, not 5, but negative 5. Okay. So I have drawn the two axes and this is the x intercept, the 1 point and this is the y intercept. And uh, the curve will be changing its concavity. You see the P is the point of inflection and it is one third 2A plus R. A is equal to 1, R is equal to 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3, one third of 3 is 1. So it will be like this, somewhat of this shape. Yes, of course, I have checked the calculator. I have shown you the graph. You see it is concave up this side and then it is concave down. So it is somewhat of this shape. Is not two lines, but it's a single line. I'm not erasing this and doing it again because I know that you are understanding the shape of the curve and I have shown you using the calculator. So this is the curve y equals x minus 1 x squared minus 2x plus 5. This is the expression of the curve. Okay, so we have done the i subpart. Now coming to i i for e equal to r, e equal to r equal to 1 over here. Uh, maybe r e uh, equal to r equal to not equal to 1, but e is equal to r that is that is true. And uh, B is greater than 0. State in terms of R, the coordinates of points P e and A. Now, I have brought in the X coordinate of point P e is this one. You can just get the Y coordinate and 
this was the coordinates of point A was the small a and the y coordinate was the g of a. And this was the expression for t of x. Okay. So, when, when uh, for p, let me just take for point p, It is uh, x coordinate will be one third p is equal to r. So it is two r plus r, which is equal to three r. So three r divided by three is equal to r. Okay. And the y coordinate y coordinate will be I'll be substituting the r in place of x. So g of r g of r is equal to r minus r. And it is r square minus 2a is equal to r. So it is minus 2 r square plus r square plus b square. This is r equal to, oh, sorry, r minus 1. So I hope you are being able to see. So this is r minus r, so this is equal to 0. So the p will be having coordinates as r comma 0. And for point a, the x coordinate of point a is a and a is equal to r. Okay. So again, since a is equal to r, therefore, the x coordinate is R. The y coordinate is g of e, which is equal to, since e is equal to r, therefore this is equal to g of r, which is equal to 0, we have seen. Okay? Therefore, the coordinates of A will be again the same R comma 0. So the points A and P, they will be coinciding, they will be the single point having coordinates R comma 0. Okay. So this completes our answering question number 2 of this paper 3. And Thank you for staying with me till the end. I'm Nilanjana Sanyal. I am an online IB Math ESL and HL level tutor. I tutor students from both within India and outside India, and I offer both one on one services and small group online tutoring services to my students. And uh, currently, I am solving the past papers, uh, the IB Math ESL past papers, and uploading the videos the corresponding videos in my youtube channel you are seeing that and since you have stayed till the end i can assume that you have liked my explanation if yes then please do give this video a like and please share this video with your friends so that even they can get benefited by watching this video and please 
subscribe to my youtube channel in case you have not subscribed till now please subscribe to my youtube channel it will be motivating me to make more math videos for you and in case you have any doubts any questions please feel free to write to me in the comment area i'll be trying to answer your questions as much as possible okay and we meet again very soon in our next session we will be starting a new paper. So till then, bye.